Manchester United have appointed Eric Ten Hag as their new manager. We've been getting reaction throughout the day. Let's get more now from the former United captain, Gary Neville, who joins us now. Gary, very good afternoon to you. Uh, it doesn't come exactly as a massive surprise, but in terms of the appointment itself, is it one that fills you with joy? I wouldn't say that at this point, just because of the sort of mood that we're in at the moment as Manchester United fans, but... I think come the end of the season, um, which needs to come very quickly for Manchester United, a new manager who they've appointed quickly, I'm pretty certain that we've heard over the last couple of weeks he's been influencing you know, what he takes control of uh, in the initial period. There'll be a lot of outgoings which are needed and then there'll obviously be uh, you know, a, a group of new signings which always bring excitement and a manager, hopefully, um, that can get the team back playing with pride again. I think that happened, to be, to be fair, previous to this season for a couple of years. But this season's been as dread, dreadful and as bad as it gets. So I think it's difficult at this moment in time to get really excited. Uh, Eric Ten Hag's still got a job to do at Ajax. But I think come the end of the season, and certainly in pre-season, there'll be that feeling of, you know, what is Eric Ten Hag going to bring to the club? What's our style of play? How is he going to impact the current players that are there that will remain and obviously the sort of incoming signings? So there, is, there will be excitement, but I don't quite feel it at this moment in time, just, just purely because of how poor Manchester United currently are. And we'll touch on some of those topics you've already hinted at, particularly recruitment. It looks like his inbox at United is going to be absolutely bulging when he does finally arrive. But let's just tick off Maurizio Pochettino because a man that you certainly backed in terms of taking on the United job. Are you disappointed not to see him taking over and what ultimately has been the sway in terms of going with Ten Hag? Yeah, I think that ultimately uh, Pochettino uh, was the, has been the outstanding choice for a number of years but I think losing in the Champions League this season, obviously not winning the league last year in France, um, you know, let's be clear, it's not an easy club to marry Paris Saint-Germain. Thomas Tuchel had problems over there in the Champions League against Manchester United uh, a few years ago and I was in the stadium that night and P Thomas Tuchel didn't look like the statesman-like figure that we're currently seeing at Chelsea. So I think purely off what's happened with Maurizio at, at, at Paris uh, has, has cost him. Um, I think he's got great experience in the Premier League, done a, done a brilliant job at Southampton at Tottenham. Um, but the mood music the sort of what would be the current moment is absolutely key. I always remember being at Manchester United when Sir Alex Ferguson was the manager and all the way through that period there would be, well, if, if Sir Alex Ferguson hangs his boots up next year, it'll be Steve McLaren, it'll be Sven Goran Eriksson at one point. It, it, so, you know, there were always these sort of feelings of who the man is at the moment and Eric Ten Hag is the man of the moment. Um, the overwhelming choice, I think, of the fans as well and obviously... You know, they've spoken to Mauricio Pochettino, they've spoken to Eric Tan Hag, and the club have determined that, you know, Eric Tan Hag is the right man to take the club forward uh, and pick it up from where, obviously, you know, Ralph Ranić has obviously got it now and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer had it before. And we understand, Gary, the decision by United was a unanimous one. The club saying they were sold by his long term vision for the club. What exactly do you want to see from him? Um, I think, to be honest with you, in the initial phase, I haven't got, uh, I haven't got what we, I don't think any Manchester United fan will sort of say Eric Tan has got to do this in his first 12 months, as in win trophies or anything like that. From the point that Manchester United currently are and what we watched at Anfield the other night, Eric Tan has just got to get a group of players in that dressing room who believe in him, that he believes in, and that fans believe in, and basically we start to build from the very bottom. Um, he's got to be supported, obviously, in the transfer market in the summer. Um, he's got to get his first recruitment uh, window right. Uh, but in the initial phase, it would be to sort of demonstrate that his love for the club, um, that, you know, his love for the club, but his, his, his belief in the club and the fact that he, you know, he understands the culture, the traditions of the club whilst bringing what would be his own style of play, ripping up what would be potentially the things of the past, but sort of still playing to the traditions of youth, which obviously Ajax are a very unique club when it comes to youth uh, production of youth players, so you shouldn't have any problem there. Manchester United have got a famous history in that department, and still it's very it's currently important to them. But the style of play, the feeling in the club, the spirit, the energy, um, at the moment, at this moment in time, I've never seen a, a group of players on a pitch on, on, on Tuesday night that have demonstrated a lack of appetite as those ones did. 
So it, it, I don't think we're, we're expecting massive amounts next year. I'm sure the club have said to him, want to get into the Champions League. And I'm sure that's what all Manchester United fans would see as being a successful season and potentially pick up a trophy as a cup. But, you know, for me, it won't be what Eric Ten Hag does in the initial phase. It'll be what happens over a three, four year period. Will he get that time, Gary? That's the key thing. If the initial phase is showing signs of heading in the right direction, but isn't bringing any degrees of success as far as the fans are perhaps concerned, would he be given that all-important time to turn this huge club around? I think he'll be given some time. Um, I think he's got a massive job on. Um, and, you know, he's at a club at this moment in time in Ajax that very different to Manchester United. Um, so he'll have to adapt. Um, the spotlight, obviously, is a lot greater and scrutiny is a lot greater at Manchester United. Um, and there is an element of risk to that. Um, you know, he doesn't know football too well in this country, but what I suspect is he has worked in different countries. I think he's got, obviously, a philosophy that he believes in. And he's just got to come over here and sort of be his own man and do his own job. At the end of the day, at this moment in time, I've been very critical of Manchester United's, well, everything at Manchester United at the moment, uh, but particularly the owners, the culture, the um, the, the, the sort of what would be the approach to what would be the last 10 years, because it's been a pretty poor 10 years of repeated failure. So he's got a massive job, let's be clear. Whether that was Mitchell Pochettino, whether it be Eric Ten Hag, exactly the same, it would be a huge job. It's a big ask to come in. Not just because what Manchester United and where they're currently at, but actually what's happening at the other clubs in the Premier League at this moment in time and the rivals. Manchester City and Liverpool are absolute Rolls Royces at this, you know, with Pep Guardiola and Jurgen Klopp and Tuchel's doing a, a fantastic job at Chelsea. So it's doubly hard. Not only has he got to correct Manchester United, he's got to try and basically take over two clubs that are purring like you wouldn't believe. And everything you're saying, Gary, just points to the, the fact that in terms of the scale of the job that he's taken on, it, it's massive. And recruitment is one of the key areas for any new boss coming in. And this seems a particularly big, big area for United going into next season. I mean, Ralph Rangnick saying it could need as many as 10 new signings, big names perhaps heading out the door as well. Just in terms of recruitment alone, how sizable a job is it? It's the, it's the most important job in football, in a football club, really, in the sense that if you get the players wrong, you're struggling. And Manchester United have repeatedly flip-flopped over a 10-year period to different philosophies. There have been moments in that 10 years where I believe that um, they were on the right track with the types of people and players they were signing. But how it's unravelled in this last eight to 10 months, from being in a Europa League final... Uh, this time last year, to where it is now, it's alarming. And I, I can't explain it. I don't think any Manchester United fan can explain it. Or certainly, probably anybody inside the club can explain why it's gone from sort of what would be a level that was, wasn't, wasn't at the very top, but it was certainly going in the right direction to a point where now it looks like... I used the word broken the other night, and I genuinely believe that dressing room is broken in, in, in spirit, in energy, in belief in each other, in likability of each other as a group. So Eric Ten Hag's got to come in, you know, Ralph Ranić has had four or five months to assess that dressing room and I'm pretty certain they'll be having very direct conversations about who he needs to get rid of because it's on the tip of Ralph Ranić's tongue every single interview he does and you feel like he's, he's going to go rogue here at some point and start basically calling players out. He's doing it in groups, he's not doing it as an individual yet but there's no doubt that Ralph Ranić will be passing that very specific information about who Eric Ten Hag needs to get rid of and I'm sure Eric Ten Hag will listen and buy into that. It, it just seems ridiculous using the phrase restoring pride and then talking about Manchester United. But actually, does he have a job in, in terms of restoring some of that pride in playing for a club of this stature? Pride is one thing, but confidence and belief is, is the other. The players have completely lost their confidence and their belief. You know, they're shot to pieces at this moment in time out on the pitch. They don't want to play football for Manchester United at this moment in time. And that's not they don't want to play football for the club. They don't want to play football. They actually want the season to finish. You can see it in their eyes when they warm up, when they walk out, when they're playing. They just want these games over. But the problem is there is no hiding place at this club. They've got Arsenal Saturday and they've got Chelsea next Thursday where all the eyes are going to still be on them. And they're going to have to try and turn up. And they're not turning up at this moment in time. So they've got to find something from somewhere. Because it's... Uh, you know, I, I want to be careful in saying that there is long-lasting damage. But the mental impact of what's happening at the club at this moment in time, of the types of defeats that they're suffering, the type 
of criticism that they're getting, the fans booing them, that is going to have long-lasting impact on some of those lads to the point where Eric Tan Hag will have to make a decision as to whether actually he can recover it. And with some of them, he may not be able to because it's getting that bad. So I think there's a big job to do in many different aspects. First job is obviously for him to decide who he wants to keep. He wants on the bus that's currently there. And that will be something that I'm sure he's doing in conjunction with Darren Fletcher on the bench and Ralph Ranick, who may remain in a consultancy role. And then he's got to decide who he wants to get on with him to make sure that that confidence, that belief and that spirit in the dressing room can rise. Uh, just a final couple of questions, Gary. We heard from Carve Sulacola a short time ago. It looks like Mitchell van der Gaag is number two at Ajax, will be joining him at Old Trafford. But there may still be a role for the likes of a Robin van Persie or Steve McLaren or Reddy Moonenstein have all been linked with possible returns to the club. Would it be good for you to have that kind of experience at the club alongside a new manager? I think that, to be fair, it's a, it's a, it's a model that most managers... Um, Great managers, uh, international managers who come over to this country have always adopted. They've always had someone who understands the club can sort of give that the fans the comfort. It's not the most critical, by the way. It's it's a role that I think just gives that sort of feeling that, you know, they'll have been to the away grounds before, which Eric Tan Hag won't have been to all the away grounds. They'll have understood maybe quite a lot more about the sort of the staff in the club that are currently there in the medical departments, the sports science, and all the other different departments within the club help with the sort of commercial aspects of the club, which is a big job at United for the players to be able to do fulfil all those contracts and make sure you're liaising with the different departments. So that role of almost being the conduit from sort of the new manager to the sort of what would be the culture and traditions of the club has always been a role that I think has been filled at different clubs by different people when this, when, when new managers have come in. I suspect Eric Ten Hag will want to try and fill that role with someone that basically he can trust, but someone he knows, but also has an understanding of Manchester United. So I would welcome it because it's something that, you know, Brian Kidd was at Manchester City with Pep Guardiola for many, many years. Um, and like I say, we've seen it with other managers as well. Gary, the contrast between when you were playing for United and now is, is a stark one in, in every sense. I mean, it's nearly five years now since they last won a trophy. This man, Ten Hag, does have a track record at Ajax of winning trophies. If he is, given that time you talked about earlier, can he bring success back to Old Trafford? That's the dream. That's the, that's the great hope. But actually, I think that for me, I'm tending now not to really compare what's currently happening with what happened in my era at Manchester United as a player, because that would be the easy thing to do and it's the easy thing to throw back at the current players and the current sort of executive. How I like in the current situation is to the sort of the, the, the fan growing up at the club in the 80s when Manchester United didn't win a league title. And I watched the club every single week for about 12 to 15 years before I became a football player at the club. And we didn't win the league title, but we had players of great pride and spirit and fight and energy. The White Side, Hughes, Robsons, Buckens, Jordans, you know, Mike Duxbury's, Arthur Alberston's. Great, great characters and personalities that were brilliant for the club. Ray Wilkins uh, didn't win a title at the club, but actually they applied themselves brilliantly well. So what we're seeing at this current moment is unacceptable. That needs to be dealt with initially. And Eric Tan Hag's got a big job to get the club back up to those minimum standards that the club needs to achieve, which is, which is attitude, work ethic, belief, confidence. And then, hopefully, you start to think then about winning trophies. But honestly, I wouldn't be putting too much pressure on Eric Tan Hag, Tan Hag in the first one or two years to win a trophy at the club. It'd be great if he did, and he'd be, I would be actually overachieving, in my opinion. It would be getting to the top four, re-establish Manchester United in the Champions League, attract the players into the club that can play the way in which he wants to play and then start to believe, get a system of belief. It took Jurgen Klopp, was it three, four, five years to win a Premier League title, as great a job as he's done. You know, so I think that it could be that type of job. You know, I wouldn't put in pressure on Eric Tan Hag in that first two or three years to win a Premier League title. They're a million miles away from that currently. Um, and yet, last se end of last season, I thought they were, to be fair, I didn't think they'd win the Premier League this year, but I thought they were getting closer and yet it's just all, to be fair, collapsed and fallen to pieces. And I don't know why that's happened. And Eric Tan Hag gets to pick up the pieces. So initial phase, build the foundations of what he wants to achieve. I think year three, four, five is when he starts to be looking at him to win trophies.